Welcome back to JB Reviews. I've been doing some videos on these cabin chassis trucks. I am here at Larry H. Miller. This is a super Ford store in Salt Lake City. Be sure to ask for these guys if you are in need of a cabin chassis truck. They tend to order a lot of these, so you should have a better chance at getting one from these guys. So I've never done a video on an F550 or F450 cabin chassis. So today is a special treat because I really want to figure out these trucks more and I think that Ford probably has one of the best frames in the game and I'm basing it off of someone who actually cuts frames on these trucks and he's always told me that Ford's frames are the best when it comes down to modifying them he said sometimes in the past he's had issues with the other brands so if you do need to do modifications obviously that will void your warranty but that's what someone told me that these are the best trucks to really modify outside of the factory uh, warranty but as you guys can see this is going to be a base model it is an xl you can get an xlt and a lariat if you would like a f550 and this one does have the optional 6.7 liter power stroke so you can get the 7.3 liter v8 gas as a standard option now obviously if you need a tow heavy and long this is probably the option you're going to pick but this is going to be good for 330 horsepower and 825 pound-feet of torque. So all in all, those are big numbers, but they do detune them from the consumer trucks. And that is a big blow to some people, but I don't think it matters because you still have the 10-speed transmission, which shifts really well, and you can gear this truck lower in the rear. So this does have the crew cab configuration. You can get the extended cab, I guess that's what you would call it and i like that they give you that option because you could pick up some more payload and still be able to carry more people and this truck if you do get it in its standard form it does have a 18,000 pound gvwr you can actually downgrade it or you can do a max capacity for this truck and get up to 19.5 so you do have a lot of options there so if you want to downgrade it if you are just doing something you know for like not for hire you can get a lower gvwr but one thing that a lot of people love about these cabin chassis trucks is really the wheel and tire and front suspension. Now this truck does have a wide front track just like the Detune F450 does. And you can kind of see it's a wide front track and it allows for a way better turning radius too. And this truck does have a 19 and a half inch steel wheel that you can see down below. These are gonna be a 225, 70, 19 and a half. And these are the Continental tires. This is about what everyone uses here and it is gonna be a load range G. And you're gonna have 3,970 pounds for single and then 3,750 pounds for dual. So out back, you're gonna have a little bit less capacity when you have a dual rear wheel setup. And that is gonna be at 110 PSI too. Solid front axle, which you would expect on a truck like this. And it does look beefy. And this does have four wheel drive too. Now this truck is so, so unfortunately I cannot show you on the inside of it, but all in all, all you need to really see is just the frame and the suspension and the wheel and tire setup. Now, as I mentioned, this does have an XL trim level, which is the base level. You can get an XLT and a Lariat too. So if you want to dress this truck up, you do have those options. This one does have some running boards on it too. And let's check out this frame. So this frame, does look pretty beefy compared to uh, Ram's cabin chassis. I mean, check out the welds. And one thing I've been really noticing too on these trucks is how they bolt in the uh, support for the leaf spring. So I might give you an example here of Ram's, but this looks pretty robust. One thing I like about it is it is bolted into the frame. So I think it gives you a little bit more of a robust suspension and they do provide one overload leaf spring. Now, I don't believe this truck has it, but they do have like a package that you can get if you need max tow, max payload. So that may upgrade these leaves here. So just keep that in mind. And hey, if you need more truck than this, they do provide an F600 too. So if you need to haul something really heavy, they do have another option there. Now these tires do look to be the same as the ones up front. Normally they give you a little bit more aggressive tire tread um, because obviously in the snow or in inclement weather, dual wheels don't really do well. But yeah, just check out your cross members here.
Yeah, this is a really robust frame here. This is gonna be your DEF tank here. Not sure what size it is, but I will put it in the video for you. Now you do have a midship tank that you can get. I believe it's like 22 gallons, but I think the maximum fuel tank size is I think 66 or something like that. This does say it has a 40 gallon auxiliary fuel tank here too. But I'll show you something really quickly here online that way I give you guys the right information. Hold on one second. These are gonna be the two tank sizes for the incomplete vehicles. And if you do get both of them basically, you can get 66 and a half gallons. Now, just something to take note of here, this does take 13 quarts of oil, and you can use a 10W30, but in the extremely cold climates, you can use a 0W40, which I probably wouldn't recommend in the summertime. I probably would try to stick with something like this. But 7.2 was the DEF, as I showed you in the video, and it's a little bit smaller than the ones with the bed, which is pretty interesting. Alrighty, so I just want to make sure I said that correctly. So this does come standard with a 40 gallon uh, fuel tank and you can add an additional 26 and a half gallons. So that gives you 66 and a half gallons of fuel if you get that extra tank. You can downgrade it like if you have like an F-350 uh, cabin chassis and just have 22 and a half gallons as an option too. But this truck does have a 430 rear end. I believe it comes standard with a 410. And you can also get a 488 on this truck. Like, that is amazing. And, I mean, obviously, that's something that you would need if you're towing heavy, if you need max tow. Now, this truck does have a high-capacity trailing, which I'll show you here on the window sticker. But um, just check out the rear here. They are using incandescent taillights. And something that I noticed... Um, I feel as though Rams might be a little bit more robust. I do believe they give you more overload leaf springs. And let's count the leaves here. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you have that 11th one. So all in all, pretty good setup here. And check out the brakes too. These brakes are huge. I mean, just to give you a comparison. And they're a little bit smaller on this F-350 that you can see here. Well, yeah, they do still provide a sway bar too. You can see it down there. So if you need to tow heavy, this is definitely the truck you're going to want to pick up. One last thing to mention about the frame, you can get a 60 cab to axle length or an 84 inch cab to axle length. And this is gonna be the 84 inch cab to axle. So when you see the price, that's what you're gonna really see here. But all in all, let's take a look at the options on this one. If you want, just be sure to pause and then you can take a look at some of the standard equipment here. But down below, you can see how much that power stroke is, $9,325. And this one does have that 430 axle limited slip in the rear. As I mentioned too, this does have the high capacity trailer tow package. I will build one of these really quickly online for you guys. Just give you an idea of some of the pricing and some of the other options that you can opt for. So 66965 And as I mentioned, this is the dealership that I'm at. Now these trucks are unfortunately sold. Yes, they are all sold. Um, Everywhere you go, if you need a commercial truck, cabin chassis, or just a base model, you know, Super Duty F350, 250, they're all spoken for. But that's the only thing that's bad is you have to try to wait in line. If someone does back out of some of these trucks, you could definitely come out here. But check this out too. I just noticed this truck does not have a badge on the side. I've never seen that before. Let's go ahead and build a F550. I'm going to do a crew cab configuration. Now, I did mention there was a uh super cab available and i believe that gm does something for the 3500s if you want something like that but uh let's go ahead and go with the crew cab now i am going to go with the 203 uh wheelbase this is going to be the 84 inch cab to axle there is also a 179 too so that's going to be for the 16 inch cab to axle but it's not much more money as you can see so oh, i clicked the wrong one so 203 and then we're going to go with the XLT. So here's some of the prices. So that's the base price for the XL. And it goes up, what, a little bit under $5,000. And 
and then you can go all the way up to a Lariat, which is 60,008. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what I built. So my truck is 77,980, figure another 15 to 20 grand for a hauler bed, and you're in business, basically. But I did add a lot of options here, and I will kind of go through some of them. Now, the ones that I would definitely recommend if you are buying this setup, if you're towing heavy and you need the max towing capacity, this is the package you're going to want to get. And that's going to give you a 488 rear, and it's going to give you a gross combined weight rating to 40,000 pounds. It upgrades the rear gross axle weight rating to 14,706. 19 and a half inch aluminum wheels. I would definitely get these, even if I don't plan on you know turning this into a personal truck. It does add a nice look to the cabin chassis. And then here's a few other things that I did. A lot of these things are small, but engine block heater to defrost with fixed glass in the rear, remote start. Uh, the power takeoff, I didn't see it, but it looks to be standard. I was looking for it earlier. And uh, who wouldn't want to get the dual fuel tanks uh, for 625? It just makes sense. And then here's a few other things here. Power glass, uh, trailer tow mirrors with heat, turn signals, and uh, high intensity LED security approach lamps too. And those lights are on the front of the mirror. So there's a few things in the interior that I did too. I did delete the carpet. I would never get carpet in a cabin chassis unless my wife told me not to. And we're using it for like just towing a big RV or a horse trailer or something like that. And just a few other things here. But let's go back to the powertrain just so you guys can see. So this is what I would always choose if I was going to get a 5500. I'd probably go for a 450 if I was looking to get a gas. But... Four wheel drive is right here, and then the 10 speed is standard. And as I mentioned, you have that 410 and the 430. So you can get the 430, I won't give you max tow. But here's some of the things that it shows for this for that option there. And then, as far as the packages go, you do have a CNG propane gas engine prep, uh, extra heavy duty front end suspension. They have two of them here. Here's the other one here. Low deflection, I guess if you have a wrecker, they add two inch spacer blocks for like a wrecker and retriever application. And payload downgrade, as I mentioned, you can downgrade them. They do give you a, a list of the downgrades for all the models, the F-350 up to the F-550. Payload plus upgrade package, this is what I clicked. And even though it doesn't show that uh, 488, it is included. So, and like I said, it does upgrade some other things. It does upgrade the frame too. So you get a little bit more robust frame, it looks like, with that rear end being updated too. Power equipment, as I mentioned, this was actually standard, but the XOT, I want to show that to you real quickly. That'd be the last thing I show you. But XOT, like I said, this is good to have. That way you have some nice features like power seat, auto uh, lock and unlock. And you get that security code pad too. But that's pretty much everything that I care to show you right now. Like I said, the price of it was $77.9. And I did click a lot of stuff. So <laughs> as you can see, the uh, truck was at almost $60,000 just under. But when you add four-wheel drive, diesel, all that stuff, it does drive the price up significantly. Well, hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure your bell notifications on. And I'll see you in the next video.